there have been days when um, when I wake up and I question myself. Like I, for a while, I just kind of lay there and not willing to even like just um, not willing to open my eyes, not willing to do anything. But then I start thinking, why do I even like? Why am I even getting out of bed? What's the point? Um, there's days like that, and there's days where. Um, at least for me, there's days where I just I get I roll out of bed with um, with excitement and determination. And these days come at different points in my life, but um, luckily for me, I think a lot of my worst days have have already passed. Not like I'm not going to have hardships in the future, but those days where um, where I felt so empty and the days where I didn't want to um, even get out of bed. Those days, I think, are far gone. And the reason why I can say, I think it's because of my attitude and my perception. Um, those days that I used to go through, those days happened after um, after something that I thought was unfair happened to me. Um, typically, that's what it was. And then, like, and then just my response to life was just to kind of want to give up. And as I've, as I've come along in this journey of trying to make myself stronger and better, I've realized that that your attitude changes everything, but also what changes your attitude is, is your focus and your purpose and your goals. And so if you find yourself struggling to get anything done, even getting out of bed, which is the first and most simple thing in the morning, um, it's because you probably don't have a purpose or a reason to do it. Nothing in life is is more meaningless than, uh, than doing something without a purpose, if that makes sense. When, when, when you do something for no reason, um, pretty soon you'll find that your life force and your energy is sapped and there's no, nothing left of you. And so my goal is to motivate anyone listening to get off your butt and to get into the gym and do something. My, my, I guess my, my rule for myself right now, I call it the 10% rule. And that rule is to do um, what I can and when I start to feel like I'm pushing against a barrier or something like I start to feel resistance, go an extra 10%. And if you if you follow that rule every day, you should grow. You should see a lot of um, increase in strength and in your aptitude to to be able to deal with life's challenges. So anyway, that's what I did today. Um, I got up and um, just without knowing exactly what I was going to do, I came into the gym knowing I was going to do something. And um, I think the, the, the first thing is just getting there, right? That's, that's good. But I think if you just go to the gym and go through the motions and you don't push yourself even a little bit is when you're going to be, eventually you're going to be disappointed by the results. You might be proud of yourself for going to the gym for a little bit, but that, that, um, that good feeling will evaporate as soon as you realize that you're not seeing results. So more importantly than getting to the gym is making sure you're pushing yourself. So I would recommend just finding anything that is challenging to you or that you haven't mastered yet, which should be almost every single lift. And you should do that. Um, practice the form. Like sometimes the extra 10% is just getting your form down. Sometimes it's, it's putting in an extra rep at the end of a set. Um, sometimes it's um, increasing or decreasing the weight. If you're, if you're lifting too heavy, sometimes giving 10% of your effort is to let go of your, your ego and to go down in weight. Sometimes when you um, are content with, with your progress and you're not um, willing to let go of, of the ease and the comfort, that extra 10% is going to be pushing a little bit more weight, whatever it is. And so today... I decided to try it, like to go back to something that I've done in the past, but really um, not not that much. It's called power swings. This is what I'm doing right now, and, and I probably have the worst form ever. Um, but I've never had anyone to teach me how to do this. I've only seen it done, and so I've been practicing kind of. Um, the power clean is supposed to be some sort of it's a power movement that involves your um, your knees, your hips, um, and your back, and everything. And it's, it's basically it's almost like a full body movement, but on the posterior side. So. I warmed up with the RDLs, with the Romanian deadlift, which I honestly, I think I'm doing more of a straight leg deadlift. Um, I think there's a difference and I haven't really figured it out yet, but those modified deadlifts I do, I was doing that to warm up and then I went into power cleans. Um, the weight, I think I got up to, let's say, um, maybe 175 or 170, something like that. And yeah. Because my form is so bad, um, that weight was was a little bit hard. It was a little bit challenging, but I think I can. I I'm most certain I can pull more weight than this. I'm just um, 
Um, I'm lacking the form, and when, when your form is ineffective, the movement is inefficient, and you waste energy and, and everything. There's not an, an efficient transfer of energy, which would allow me to pull more weight. So, for the time being, I'm just going to have to keep working on my form, and, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so, as also what's going on right now, I guess, personally, is that um, I teach a class in church, and it's called Gospel Principles. And it's basically a class for people that are new to church, um, want to learn more, or like have been recently baptized and want to continue going at like um, somewhat of a, not like a slow, I guess it is a slow like this. Anyway, the idea is that we're helping them by teaching them the basic gospel principles. So that way when they go to the, like the normal class that they're not totally lost. And so this week we're preparing to teach about um, Abraham. We're in the book of Genesis, reading about the stories of Abraham and his family. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about um, what happened with Abraham and his family and Lot and his family. And one thing that's always kind of been curious to me is the story when, um, when the, the city is destroyed and Lot and his family have to evacuate. And then Lot's wife gets turned into a pillar of salt. That's always kind of been interesting to me. And as I read it this week, um, one thing came to mind. And... Anyway, by the way, this is totally unrelated from the workout, but what came to mind is that um, the Bible is is not just a book, it's like a library, and it's a book full of books, and each book was written thousands and thousands of years ago, especially Genesis being the first one, was written way before um, any of the other books, and so it's possible that in, in whatever language that they wrote, that there could have been an alternate interpretation or meaning behind some of the words and phrases. And then over time, as people try to translate it, they translated it imperfe- imperfectly, I guess, and they, um, they kind of changed the meaning slightly. And one thing I thought of is that, so the, the, the angels that come to visit Lot and his family, and they tell them to n- not look back at the city, um, that God was gonna rain fire on it. And then as they're leaving, and as, as the destruction starts to happen, um, it, it basically, um, it says that, like, I, I, I don't know exactly because I'm not looking at it right now, but it basically it says that, that Lot's wife kind of turned back or whatever. And one thing that came to my mind is that what if it meant instead of her, like, kind of looking back, like, it's kind of the traditional belief that she looked at the city while it was being destroyed. What if she went back to the city and was vaporized? Um, I think it's like, it's, there's um, a belief, I guess, that the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah was from a, a meteor strike, um, which kind of makes sense of like the fire coming from heaven. And so it's possible that the force of the, of the meteor could have incinerated her body, if that makes sense, instead of her like looking back. Because I know if I was there and I, and I could witness the destruction of a city, I, w- I would be hard pressed to not just turn around and watch it. But I think the scripture might be saying that she went back to the city instead of going with Lot and his family. And that's why she died. So, why does this matter? I think it's super applicable for us to, to learn not to go back to places where, um, where growth couldn't happen for us, if that makes sense. If you were ever in a place, like I just said, where you're, you're finding it hard to wake up in the morning, um, you're, not really, you're not enjoying life, not getting anything out of it, out of your daily, um, I guess your day to day. Um, once you get out of that, or once you first, you have to figure out how to get out of that. And once you do, you should never go back. And basically, the the principle being that where you where you stay is where your heart is, and where your heart is, and it says in the scriptures, where your heart is, there where your treasure is, that's where your heart shall be also, or something like that. Basically, saying that like where your where your um where your feelings are is where you are and if you feel um like you want to be uh laying in bed doing nothing that's where you're going to be and if you feel like you want to be um stronger and you want to become a better person you're going to be in the gym so it's like um once you get out of this the state of like never doing anything and never getting anything done you can never go back that's where i'm at right now some days i come into the gym just because it's the it's like it's what has to be done if um, if I didn't come to the gym today, that would have meant that um, that the last four months or however many of the months I've been lifting, um, trying to get stronger, it, that would be me saying it, it meant nothing to me. That all the things I've learned, that it means nothing. And that I'd rather be in the same place I was before. And that's just unacceptable to me. So yeah.
anyway, so now I went back to the RDLs to finish out. Um, the first set, the first round of RDLs were kind of just warm ups, and these ones I'm going a little bit heavier. But um, as you'll see, I kind of dropped the weight. So right now I'm at 185. Um, I took the 25s off and then put 15 on the end, just because I had just finished uh, the power cleans and the front squats. That it, I felt like just to just to get the the right range of motion and to not have too much strain on my body, um, I needed to get a little, go a little bit lower in weight. So I did three sets, I think, and th and it was perfect. The first set was a little bit too heavy, so I went down on the weight. And with the full range of motion, locking out at the top and everything, I, it felt great. I could feel it activating my hips and everything. But yeah, I think that's it for the video today. Um, just a reminder, if you haven't, just get off your butt and go to the gym. It'll be good for you. It'll be worth it. Um, do what you feel is right. And what you feel is where you're going to be. It's where your mind and your, um, and your body as well will follow. So if you're not feeling well, you got to make sure that you understand why you're not feeling well and do um, put, put, put in some work and put in some corrective measures. Go to the gym um, and be disciplined about it and you'll start to see that you'll start to lift yourself out. Find a reason, find a purpose. Um, if you have a purpose for everything, everything will mean more, everything will matter. And anyway, that's it for me. Have a great one, guys.